In this recording, we'll discuss the regulation of pulmonary ventilation. There are three primary physical factors that influence overall effectiveness of pulmonary ventilation. Remember that is taking lung, uh, air into the lungs and then expelling that air from the lungs. These are airway resistance, alveolar surface tension, and pulmonary compliance. Airway resistance is really thing, anything that impedes airflow through the respiratory tract. Alveolar surface tension, um, that is your alveoli are covered with a thin film of liquid that creates a gas water boundary. We'll go into a good bit of detail about that in just a second. Uh, and then pulmonary compliance. Now pulmonary compliance is really just the ability of the lungs and chest wall to stretch effectively. If the lungs or the thoracic cavity are not able to expand adequately, it makes it difficult to bring in adequate amounts of air. So the airway resistance. This is pretty much determined by the diameter of the airway. Resistance decreases slightly during inspiration as the air passages are pulled open and resistance increases slightly as the lungs recoil which causes the airways to become more narrow during expiration. The diameter of the bronchioles themselves are controlled by the smooth muscles that surround the bronchioles that we've mentioned previously. Relaxation or bronchodilation will increase the diameter of the bronchioles. This decreases the airway resistance and will increase the air flow. Okay, so the bigger the diameter, the more air we can move through there. And then during contraction, the uh, diameter of the bronchioles constricts or bronchoconstricts. This uh, increases the airway resistance and decreases the air flow. So if we narrow this diameter, it makes it harder for air to flow through there and it um, reduces the amount of air that can flow through there. Now alveolar surface tension, we said we'd come back to that one. This one's a little bit, um, this one's a little bit complicated. Um, the alveoli themselves, if you remember the little uh, sacs that kind of look like grapes, they are covered with a thin film of liquid and that's mostly water. Now surface tension, okay, um, specifically at a gas water boundary. First of all, the surface tension itself is created by hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. Okay, So these hydrogen bonds are going to pull these water molecules closely together and it gives a little bit of tension, Okay, surface tension at this boundary. Um, the same thing happens at the surface of a pool. Okay. The surface tension is greatest when the alveoli are at their smallest diameter. Okay, and we just learned that that would be during expiration. Um, if the surface tension is uh, great enough, okay, then you could end up with your alveoli collapsing. Okay, so high amounts of unopposed surface tension. So if surface tension gets too high, your alveoli could collapse during expiration. Okay, we call this atelectasis. Um, it becomes much more difficult to do gas exchange if your little alveoli are all collapsed. So we don't want this, right? Like this is bad. We have surfactant, which we've mentioned previously. Um, the surfactant substance opposes the surface tension okay, and helps reduce the likelihood of alveoli collapse. So this allows the alveoli to remain partially open even during expiration. Okay. That's kind of what it looks like. So without their surfactant, okay, which are the little, um, well, the bigger, I don't know, orangish colored molecules. Okay, we don't have that over here. Okay, so all of this surface tension, okay, is pulling these alveoli. Everybody's getting pulled inwards, so this little alveolus has collapsed. Okay, over here the surfactant is getting in the way. Okay, you'll notice it's every other molecule, so the, wa uh, the water molecules aren't able to make the hydrogen bonds which create the surface tension and so nobody's getting pulled inwards. Okay. 
Okay, so this alveolus is able to stay inflated. All right, pulmonary compliance. Okay. This is, again, the ability of the lungs and or the thoracic cavity to stretch. Okay. There are three things <laughs> that actually affect pulmonary compliance. Okay. Um, one is the degree of the alveolar surface tension that we've just mentioned. Number two is the distensibility of elastic tissue. And number three is the ability of the chest wall to actually move. So, degree of alveolar surface tension. Okay. So increased surface tension resists the ability of the alveolus to inflate. Okay. We said that was bad. All right. We have the surfactant that helps us overcome the surface tension, so your alveoli can stay inflated, which is what we're going for. One of the other reasons that we want to keep our alveoli open, okay, and we're not a fan of surface tension, because increased surface tension decreases compliance. Okay? The lower the compliance, the less able you are to expand your lungs and, well, for this case, you're just your lungs. Okay? The less able you are to expand your lungs, the less effective you are at gas exchange. Okay? The surfactant, again, counteracts all of this. So the surfactant actually increases the compliance and makes it easier for us to expand the lungs like we need to. Now the next one, distensibility of the elastic tissue. Okay, so your lungs, we've mentioned, are full of elastic tissue. Um, it's really good for stretching and then doing recoil. If the elastic tissue starts to become less elastic for whatever reason, or if we start to turn lung tissue into um, fibrotic tissue, or scar tissue, um, that would decrease your elasticity, which would um, decrease your compliance. Okay? However, as long as your elastic tissue is um, good and functioning, this increases your compliance and makes it easier for you to stretch out your lungs. The ability of the chest wall to move or stretch during inspiration so the more you can expand your chest or your thoracic cavity, the more your lungs could also expand. Okay, all of this would increase compliance. If there's anything going on that decreases your ability to expand your thoracic cavity, then that would decrease your compliance. Okay. 